Uh, yes, uh, I'm uh, Matthew Budoff. I'm a professor of medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine and uh, a researcher at the Lundquist Institute in Torrance, California in the United States. My trial is called Evaporate, um, the effect of icosapentethyl on progression of coronary atherosclerosis uh, in patients with elevated triglycerides. So Evaporate is a mechanistic study. Uh, uh, the goal was to investigate the effect of icosapentethyl or EPA uh, on atherosclerosis. Um, in the setting of the REDUCE-IT trial, which was a positive study showing event reduction with this product, we wanted to look at whether or not this had a direct anti-atherosclerotic effect by measuring serial CT angiography. So the design was a prospective randomized double blind placebo controlled study. It was, uh, uh, we randomized 80 patients at baseline. They had to have well controlled LDL cholesterol. They had to have elevated triglycerides and they underwent a CT angiogram. So if they had atherosclerosis present, we randomized them to either four grams of icosapentethyl or placebo and followed them for the next 18 months, uh, getting a CT angiogram at nine months as an interim measure, and then at 18 months uh, at the, as the final measure to look for plaque changes over time. So, uh, so evaporate, um, and we're now presenting this at the European Society of Cardiology meeting, um, demonstrated uh, plaque regression uh, we had less plaque on follow-up uh, for our primary endpoint, which was low attenuation plaque. And it was uh, statistically different than placebo where there was progression of plaque over the course of 18 months. Um, so low attenuation plaque is what people might think of as vulnerable plaque. It's the fatty or necrotic core um, inside the arteries. Um, and we use that as our primary endpoint and the p-value was 0 0.006. So highly statistically significant as compared to placebo. And we also showed um, improvements in fibro fatty plaque um, or soft plaque, if you will, fibrous plaque, as well as total non-calcified plaque and total plaque uh, all looked better and were statistically better on icosapentethyl as compared to placebo over 18 months. So I think at this point, we uh, better understand now the, um, the uh, benefits of icosapentethyl. Uh, we know that its, its benefits in the REDUCE IT trial were not primarily driven by triglyceride lowering. So while we were treating patients with high triglycerides and we saw a 25% event reduction on top of statin therapy, so a robust benefit, we really didn't fully understand the mechanism by which icosapentethyl is affecting its benefit. So I think now we know that compared to placebo, icosapentethyl at four grams a day significantly reduced multiple plaque components, including our vulnerable or low attenuation plaque. And this benefit was seen as early as nine months. So it started at nine months. We, we presented our nine month interim data at the American Heart Association, and we started to see curve separation there and with sustained and increasing significant by 18 months. So to our knowledge, it's the first marriage of clinical trial results, the REDUCE IT study, and an imaging cohort, the EVAPORATE trial, demonstrating consistent benefits on both outcomes and plaque reduction. So we've kind of uh, been able to now, I think, suggest that icosapentethyl is, is working at the level of atherothrombotic burden. So it's reducing atherosclerosis over time as at least one of its mechanisms of benefiting our patients. So I, I think that it's important to remember that um, icosapentethyl is a relatively new drug. It's still seeking approval um, um, if in, uh, in Europe for, for, 
clinical use. It's incorporated in multiple guidelines, uh, but again, not widely used yet. And I think Evaporate should help lend support to the Reduce It trial to suggest that this is a a beneficial drug for our patients and that for our patients who have their onestatin, they have residual elevated triglycerides, that this is a, a therapy that can help them uh, reduce their atherosclerotic burden and hopefully reduce their risk of myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular death as well. So the next steps for us are gonna be um, looking carefully at um, other populations um, to look for benefits uh, with this therapy. Uh, we're gonna do a, a larger trial, uh, Evaporate. Uh, the limitations of Evaporate was it was only 80 patients enrolled and um, um, you know, it was a relatively small study. So we're planning on doing a larger cohort, uh, a slightly different cohort, but it'll reproduce hopefully our results in Evaporate. And, give everybody more confidence, not only that CT angiography is a great way to track atherosclerosis over time, uh, which I think we've been able to show in multiple cohort studies already, but also that this therapy, icosapentethyl, affords a nice clinical benefit for our patients and, and can help us um, um, moving forward uh, with, our, with our patient care. You know, we, we chose to use CT angiography instead of intravascular ultrasound because it was less invasive and also very well validated. We have multiple uh, validation studies that have looked at the QAngio software that we used. A company uh, called Metis out of the Netherlands um, um, has validated software very carefully with intravascular ultrasound and showed that it's a highly reproducible measure. And we've been able to successfully use it in eight other studies of other therapies. Most notably, we looked at testosterone uh, and we published data in uh, JAMA in 2017 showing that testosterone actually increases uh, atherosclerosis on serial CT angiography. So we had great confidence that serial CT angiography can afford us an accurate look at the coronaries at baseline and then a, an accurate look at follow-up to see if there were differences um, based on the different therapies that patients receive. 